Hey, what's up? So I've got another handful of neat little Linux programs to take a look at. Um, mainly some rare and interesting terminal programs with, I guess, like particular use cases would be the way I would describe it. And to start with Durdraw, which is essentially a pixel animation studio, but for text-based art and in the terminal. So text-based meaning ASCII art, ANSI art, uh, Unicode art, etc. Um, and essentially, if you're used to making pixel art at all, this is probably going to be pretty familiar in terms of how it works. You have your, your you're a color picker, you've got, you know, your ability to go frame to frame here and edit each frame. And you do have keyboard support for the whole program, but you also have mouse support, which I think is what makes this program really special. You have full mouse support for drawing, painting, and navigating through menus. Um, and really, this is pretty much a fully fledged pixel editor, honestly. And um, if you want to access the help menu, it's just escape and then H, and that's going to show you different keybinds and just get you started with the program there. And you know what I think is really cool? Um, this is the site for it. The site itself is actually pretty sick, honestly. This is a nice website, but um, essentially it's a rebirth of some of the classic ANSI editing software software, but you know, for modern terminals with modern features, which I think is really cool, honestly. And the site itself has a bunch of nice examples of, you know, art and animations that people have created uh, with this tool. And this is like the classic internet art. You know, when you think of like the internet and the art of the internet, this is like what you think of. This is precisely what you think of. So I think it's pretty cool, personally. And you also have Durfetch, which is essentially NeoFetch, but with DirDraw animations and artwork attached to it, which, um, to be fair, it is actual NeoFetch itself. It's not FastFetch or anything. Um, hopefully they'll update in the future since NeoFetch is sort of deprecated. I don't think NeoFetch is getting any more development, but um, yeah, it is actually pretty cool. And there's default animations as well. So if I just run DirFetch by itself, it's gonna go ahead, give me one of the default animations with my, my system stats here, which if you're a fan of this aesthetic, I think it, I think it's pretty cool, honestly. But of course you can also add in your own animations and you can use different values to get, you know, your, your different like system stats, your NeoFetch stats into that animation. So if you're, if you're the type of person who posts your uh, setup specs everywhere on the internet, then have at it. Anyways, um, next up, something that's a little bit more practical and traditionally useful, I think would be the way to put it. And that is Caligula. And what Caligula is here is it's essentially just a streamlined version of disk burning commands. Um, and the developer makes a really good argument for why this tool should actually exist and why they created this tool. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought, you know, just of my own accord that a tool like this would need to exist, but I'm actually convinced now uh, with their argument. And their argument is why the DD command itself is not good enough on its own. And if you're not familiar, DD is generally like the most basic command you would use to burn a disk image. Um, and their reasoning here is that when you're using the DD command, you're not just going to be running one command. In a realistic example, you're going to be going through eight or 10 different commands in order to burn your disk. And you're going to start by, you know, unzipping your ISO file. You're going to list out your disks. Um, I would add in, you're probably actually going to look up the man page of DD, or you're going to like look up uh, the syntax for it because most of us are not burning disks 24 seven. And because of the severity of burning a disk with a command like DD, where uh, if you mess it up, you might really mess up and, you know, overwrite your system disks, right? Um, and that's that's why it has the nickname Disk Destroyer, honestly. So you're probably going to be looking up the syntax um, and then you're going to, you know, start running the command. You're going to realize, oops, I forgot to put a sudo. You're going to rerun it with sudo. You're going to realize you wanted to see progress and add in status progress. It's going to be a whole mess of commands where as instead the developer thought this could just be condensed to one command, one simple command. And also it didn't have to be some sort of bloated mess of a GUI program, unlike a bunch of the other, um, you know, disk etching pro software that exists, which there's a lot of really bad disk etching programs out there. Um, and this ideally is very small and minimal. It's under four megabytes right now. Um, and to just show you how it would work, um, literally just Caligula burn and then just give a path to your file. So downloads, um, I've got a uh, super grub two downloaded, which super grub two is a great thing to have on hand. I will probably make a video about it at some point. And it's just going to allow me to select what disks are available. And you'll notice it's only showing removable disks, which is really important because that way I can't accidentally select to like any of my file system disks or my raid disks or backup disks, etc. So 
Um, if I just pressed enter, it would go ahead and write. Um, I don't actually want to overwrite my flash drive here, so I'm just going to go ahead and quit out of that. But if I just pressed enter there, I would get this nice little progress graph and it would just go ahead and write. So I am actually convinced of the need uh, out there for a tool like this. I can see why this is useful. So um, next up, something a little bit more niche in terms of the user base that would be using it, and that is pastel. And pastel mainly is going to be for anybody who is working with colors, whether it's, you know, color palettes or you need, you know, colors for a tool you're creating or whatever else. Essentially, it is just an all in one command line tool for uh, color palettes, analyzing colors, manipulating colors, converting colors between various formats, etc. And um, the GIF is actually doing a pretty good job of showing you how this command works. Uh, but to just show you it in action, I could do like pastel color pink. And what I could then do after that is get a complement for that color. So I could do pastel complement, and that's going to be a complementary color to pink there. I could do pastel gradient and then just give like, um, I don't know, purple cyan, and that's going to be like a gradient between purple and cyan. I could then reformat that. So I could do pastel format hex or pastel format RGB. And you can start getting pretty creative with the pipelines with pastel. There's there's a lot of different options available with it. So I could do like pastel random. Um, that's just going to give random colors there. What I could then do is pipe that into pastel mix and then mix in a specific color of my choice. So I could do pastel mix um, dash F 0.7 and then like a purple, right? And that's going to now mix in purple into those randomized colors. And then I'll just get a bunch of different purples and I could do, you know, pastel format RGB and that's going to give me RGB color formatting. And that's just going to be random purples, random purples. I could do, you know, green or whatever else. And this is where it really starts to shine if you're working with colors a lot, because what I used to find is I would be going to websites for this functionality. I would be, you know, opening up uh, gradient creation websites or color uh, palette websites. There's a bunch of websites that just like give you color palettes and that sort of stuff. But this actually makes it just directly in the command line, which I think is always an advantage just because it's always going to be faster, really, if, if you're just using one singular command rather than having to go search for a website and then figure out the right website and figure out where the page on the website, you know, all that sort of stuff. So um, for me, somebody who does work with colors a fair amount, I find this pretty useful, but definitely sort of a niche uh, user base, I guess. And next up, something else that is a little bit niche, but I think everybody can appreciate to some extent, and that is AstroTerm. And what AstroTerm is, is it is a planetarium directly in your terminal. So by default, it's going to show you the stars and the planets and the constellations in your own sky for your own location, but you could also give any city, you could give any date in history or in the future, and you can set things like how fast it's going to rotate, whether it's got constellations shown, the threshold for the number of stars shown. Actually, I should just be demonstrating it here. So I could just run AstroTerm. Um, actually, I could run it by itself, but let me not dox myself and give it a city instead of my own location. So we could do AstroTerm London. That's what it's going to look like by default, but we could easily add in dash dash color dash dash constellations and we could give it like speed of 100 and it's going to move a little bit faster and let me zoom out so you can sort of get a better idea of how this looks and honestly if nothing else i think it looks pretty sick but the the real use case for this is i'll always find like i'm seeing some bright star or planet and i have no idea what it is because i don't know astronomy very well at all and you know this is really useful to just be able to quickly look up what is that star or or that planet that i'm seeing and I could also do like dash T1 and that's going to remove all of the smaller stars. I could do dash T100 and then we're just going to have every star there. And I think this is a really nice little option instead of, you know, what normally you would do if you were just going to be looking up like what stars are there in the sky. You'd either like search it on the web and have to go to a website or you'd be downloading an app to see it. And I think this sort of just streamlines it to be directly in your terminal, which is always fun. And plus, I think it's just a pretty cool program. Anyways, that's about it for today. I will see you next time. Peace.